This is the voyage of the Movie Watch Enterprise to boldly go to the Star Trek Generations Convention here in the Albert Hall. We're engaging maximum warp today in the hope of catching up with the captain himself, Jean-Luc Picard. Make it so. Greater Bridge, energize. Captain Jean-Luc Picard, what do you think of him? Yeah, I think Picard's great, yeah. I'm actually named my son after Jean-Luc. What about Captain Jean-Luc Picard? Do you like him? Oh, definitely. What about Captain Jean-Luc Picard? Baldy. No, I don't like him. Well, like him or lump him, the controversial captain granted our request for an audience. So we set the necessary coordinates, and at great expense to Movie Watch and at considerable risk to myself, I was beamed down to meet Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Patrick, welcome to your own personal nexus. It doesn't get more nexus-like than this, does it? Now, in your youth, did you watch Star Trek at all? No. I don't think I ever watched an episode all the way through. So what were you a fan of in your youth, then? Huddersfield Town Football Club. Captain, how long has it been since you've seen a doctor? Have you got to grips with the concept of space-time continuum, magnetic flux, and warp drive? Do you want the truth, or do you want me to just... The truth, okay. please! Right. I have no concept whatsoever of what any of those things mean. I mean, not even the vaguest concept. Help, walk one, engage! Hearing me say those lines and watching me, you'd never believe that for one moment, would you? Are you freaked out by obsessive Trekkies? The ones that freak me out are, generally speaking, not the Trekkies, uh, but rather it's those who are obsessive in rather unhealthier ways. I've come as Luaxana Troy, daughter of the fifth host, heir to the Holy Rings of Beta Z, holder of the sacred chalice of Reeks. Now tell me, when you're on the bridge, things get a bit hairy. I mean, you get sort of shaken around all <coughs> over the joint. Oh, you know, those electrical storms. <laughs> we have asteroid belts that we have to get through. <laughs> Not to mention the ship's many malfunctions. Do you get lessons on how <coughs> to shake convincingly? Uh, I give lessons now in how to <laughs> shake convincingly. What size of joke would you like? Seems strange that there's never any seatbelts employed. Isn't that curious, yes. Uh, when you return to the West End, do you expect there'll be quite a few Trekkies hanging about the stage door? Oh, uh, uh, undoubtedly. But they're perfectly harmless, you know. Live long and prosper. People speak of them as though they're some kind of alien uh, life form. Hello. You're a Borg man. Yes. Largely because when you and your colleagues go to conventions and so on. What you focus on are those fans who are dressed as Klingons or whatever, you know, Patrick Stewart lookalikes. Engage. Have you ever bought one of those commemorative Star Trek chess sets? You know, like the ones you see in the back of News of the World? No. Can you speak any Klingon at all? Oh, yes, I can, yeah. I can say, um, gach. Hoch, moch, achrach. I can also say, kapla. <laughs> What's that? I will leave that to your imagination. Can you translate Nuk das Yak da Pol? Yes. If you are Jean Luc Picard, captain of the Enterprise, why does your spaceship not have seatbelts? I'm sorry, Patrick, we can't accept that. But for the correct answer, here's a chap who knows his Klingon. Where do you keep the chocolate? This has gone on long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sally there with the commander of the USS Enterprise. Right, hot on the heels of that comes Solitaire for two.